Hello and welcome to this episode of the Digital Disruption Podcast brought to you by Novus Strategy and Consulting with Pete Gatenby and myself, Chris Williams. In today's episode, we're going to be talking data and the importance of resharable data, upfront data, and how that can fundamentally impact the home buying and selling journey. And more importantly, what it actually means to you as an actor in the process and these steps that you can be taking to leverage the opportunity. Hello, Chris. Hello, mate. How are we? Yeah, good. Thank you. Good. Thank you. New environment for us today. It is a new environment. Uh, Office day. Nice to see everyone. It is. Um, I'm going to try and do this without any distractions. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, So first question, we've got a new prop as well as a new environment. What's what's that on the desk? We have got a new prop. It's the Digital Disruption Newsletter. Uh, For those that are watching, you'll be able to see it. For those of you that are listening, uh, we have launched a printed newsletter uh, that will land on people's doorsteps uh, or office desks. Uh, once a month, packed full of intelligence and insights around the digital transformation that's driving the UK property market. Uh, So the idea of this is to really provide insights and guidance. It's one of a kind, I believe, in the market. Uh, This month's edition has got packed full of insights, including a one piece from you about AI. And we've also got a really important piece, which correlates nicely with this uh, episode of the podcast which is a guest piece from maria harris the chair of the opda open property data association talking about data standards and the importance of that in the home buying and selling ecosystem and how that's going to drive transformation great stuff one final call two final questions actually how much is it and how do people get it uh, it's completely free, and how people get it is, is if you just go to our website, novus-strategy.com, you will be prompted within about t- uh, 10 seconds with a sign-up option, and just literally pop in your address details in there, and this will land on your desk. If you do it within the next week, uh, we can send you this edition. Uh, any later than that, you'll be getting edition two and yep. onwards from there. Brilliant. Let's dive in. Data then. Topic close to my heart from a technology standpoint, but actually has a different meaning for us today. Um, what is data in the property transaction? And uh, it's relevant, really. Well, it's highly relevant because it's effectively a trigger for m- m- all parts of the transaction process. But let, <clears throat> putting it into context, it's important as a topic right now because what we're seeing in the home buying and selling sector is obviously the second phase of digital transformation, which we talk a lot about. Uh, But for anybody new, just very, very quickly, what we refer to as HDI or horizontal digital integration is essentially what is driving interoperability in this next phase of transformation. Key to that is data standards and how data can be not just ingested into the home buying and selling process, but how that data can be shared and how it can be reused. So if we look at a traditional transaction at the moment, At the front end, there is data that is uh, inputted into a series of systems, whether that's at the estate agency stage, at the broker stage. But this information, let's just uh, take an ID check, for example, that is repeated multiple times in the process. So the concept of having data standards is the ability to be able to, one, have a set of common standards that everybody can adhere to, so you, the second part of that is is the ability to be able to reuse data across the ecosystem. What the ultimate aim of doing that is, is fundamentally to reduce transaction times, number one. Number two is to improve the customer experience. And number three, in doing those two things, we can really impact a true uh, transformation and introduce proper end-to-end uh, digital uh, home buying and selling. And this uh, this data is a critical component part to it. So we always look at that critical measure of how long it takes someone to transact on a property and what the average uh, days can be anywhere from 150 to 200 days depending on the data sources that we look at. Data is critical, right, in mm-hmm. getting that timeline down. Yeah. How so? Well, there's a number of things because it's not just the data and the sharing of that data. We just It's actually part of the, like the processing of the data. So if we take an ID check, for example, you, the ID check will happen multiple times in the process. That's wastage. Whereas if we can get that information at one stage of the process and make that ID reusable and shareable, what that means then is it reduces repetition. 
Now, of course, there's risk associated with that. There's provenance of, of that information that's got to be verified, but it will it fundamentally impact the time it takes to get something done. And we're starting to see that now with a number of uh, things that are happening in market uh, and pilots and things like that. If we talk about like actual data standards more specifically now, we've seen that um, trading standards have introduced uh, a bit part A, B, and C now to ensure that information that's collected at the point of putting a property on the market, that information then is also critical. If that can be passed along the chain in from the estate agents into the brokers, into the law firms, that itself reduces the transaction time. Where again, we can see that there's pilot, a pilot in place that's, that's trying to demonstrate that um, from LMS. And we can see that this stuff's starting to have an impact. So data is critically important and the reuse of it. Now, we're at a fairly embryonic stage here. And as sort of Maria points out in, in, in her article in, from the OPDA in our newsletter, you know, actually getting involved in this and starting to look at these data standards and starting to get involved in it is actually mission critical. Uh, and I believe that to be the case too. And the reason that it's mission critical is the opportunities that it presents. Now, let's focus on the customer experience for a second. It's going to make a huge impact to the customer experience if we can make them not have to continually repeat elements of the process that becomes very frustrating in what already is a very stressful experience. It improves things for all the actors in the process. If you can get that data, uh, the provenance, and you can share it properly it improves things there so that's better for everybody so at the custom with the customer at the heart of it fantastic great job for them but what does it mean for the actors how can they leverage this well actually potentially as we start to get into the lender arena broker arena this actually means that interoperability means predictability and when you start to share data and we can get predictable about things revenue opportunities start to come in and we're starting to enter into a new world here now and big opportunities Big opportunities for many different actors in the process, right? For all actors in the process. I mean, yeah. we said that, you know, keep the customer at the heart of it. Where you improve customer experiences, we've seen cross industry before, where you improve customer experience, you fundamentally present opportunities to commercialize that. Let's deep dive into some of the benefits then. Let's talk about lenders. Mm -hmm. What's the benefits of reusable data for lenders? Do you know what? I'm glad you brought lenders up actually into this because I think a lot of it is... Um, being looked at before it gets into them. But the big benefit here for lenders is as follows. I just used the phrase in in, in, in my past comment about interoperability yep. equals predictability. So for lenders, what this means, what predictability means is this. If we can take upfront information and, for example, a lender can say to a borrower, look, we can predict when you're going to exchange and close on your property we can we can literally know when this is going to happen with that level of predictability they can commercialize that they could offer them a better uh, in life experience yeah, they yeah. could say well look do you want to choose when you want to complete an exchange in order to do that you're going to have to use these particular law firms who are on our panel or whatever it likes to be and the reason that that's important to a lender is that they can then start to offer other services. They can say, well, you know, they can upsell and things like that. That's just one particular use case because if you can predict what's happening, then you can massively improve the customer experience and you can commercialize that. So I think the benefits to lenders, that's just one of them. The other benefit really is around predictability, not just from a commercial standpoint, is actually once you get into the life cycle of a of a mortgage, if you've got all these things connected up, you can actually begin to look at in life uh, products, in life servicing. If we think about, and this is important for brokers, I know you've asked about lenders, but the lender and broker community, well, all of it's interconnected. But those two particular acts are obviously you know hugely connected. Eighty percent of uh, mortgages a broker introduced, or figures to that effect. If you, if you can start actually seeing what's happening in life, you can actually start to serve up products based on what's happening with your customers in life experiences. Because from the point of applying to the point of completing and moving, things happen, things change. And so these are the sorts of opportunities that are going to be start to be presented. And I think 
you know, for me, they're sort of big benefits. And so if you're in the lending arena, in the broker arena, or anywhere really on this space, starting to get an understanding of HDI and interoperability is, is really important. So what steps should actors be taking when it comes to reusable data in, in, when they start looking at their own processes? I think the first thing to do is to look at up and downstream and map your own processes. Now, we say this a lot you know, about mapping processes and doing that kind of looking at that value stream, but it's a really important exercise, especially when it comes to data and looking at where that data comes into you, what access to data have you got, how are you organizing that data, where could you enrich that more? So that's the first thing to do, and all actors can do that, irrelevant of where they are in the process. The next thing, once you've actually done that exercise, is to begin then begin to workshop out where the quick wins and the benefits are directly impacting the customer experience and how you, whatever actor group you are, lender, law firm, broker, how you can start to leverage that. The third thing then is to look at who do you need to tap into because this is going to be a collaborative thing and what networks do you need access to in order to do that. Now, my open invitation is a bit of a shameless plug, get in touch because we can absolutely help you with all of those stages very quickly. Unquestionably, you're going to have to start building tech at some point. You're going to have to improve your systems. You're going to have to build applications to sit on top of what you've already got. And you absolutely are going to have to do integrations. But the key thing is, is to start this sooner rather than later, because if you don't, you're going to be on the back foot. And so my big invitation to people is, think about what we've just said there in terms of those high level steps. If you need some help, get in touch because we can help you workshop this out pretty quickly and begin to pinpoint where your opportunities are, wherever you are in that process, especially if you're in that lender community, because there's a massive opportunity for those guys. So that concludes this episode of the Digital Disruption Podcast. If you've got any questions or any comments, please do get in touch. As always, please like and share and subscribe. Finally, one last little plug for us. We are doing our 50th episode of this podcast on December the 5th of this year. It's going to be a live recording of the podcast right here in this very building, our office in Leamington. If you are interested in being in that live audience, then you can go to our website at novas-strategy.com forward slash podcast, and you can register there to be in attendance. For now, thanks for tuning in, and we'll hope to see you again soon. Thanks a lot.